Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we're doing here is more volume and working with volume. And we're going to start to uh, think of volume as term in terms of base area. Um, I like to call them layers. I did this in the last video, but uh, officially now we're, we're sitting here. So uh, finding the straight volume of a prism, a rectangular prism, again, I like to think of a, a volume as finding a base area or the amount of space inside the floor of a rectangular prism. And once I have that value, I want to find out how many layers of that base area exist, and this value gives me that. So um, that's kind of how things are going to work here a bit. And that's how I like to think of volume. Find out the area of the floor, and then if it's a prism, that area remains the same, or the floor remains the same size, as you put layers and layers on top. And so uh, your total is that base area combined with the amount of layers that you need. So the formula for that is length times width times height. Now that length and the width gives me that base area. Okay, those two values on the bottom giving me an amount of space. And then the height gives me the amount of layers, as I like to call them. Okay, so in this particular sample over here, we have three values. We have our length, which is here, our width, and our height. So these two give me my base area, and this guy gives me my height. So volume is going to equal one and one half. I'm going to write all these out. Times one half times seven eighths. There we have it. So in order to multiply fractions, I'm going to turn everything into a fraction. So that one and one half, if I had to turn into halves, that gives me three halves. One half is looking good already. My seven eighths is looking good already. Before I multiply, I'm going to see if there's anything I can simplify. I don't see anything I can simplify. So I'm going to just continue to multiply. So my three times one times seven gives me 21 over two times two, which gives me four. And then four times eight gives me 32. And there it is. So 21 over 32 meters cubed. Uh, because we're filling those in with our wonderful little meters, okay? Cubic meters, anyway. All right, so that's a straight solution there as far as finding a volume. Number two is interesting. We're, now we're talking about straight base area. So if I were to draw this guy right here, here we go, connect these guys out, and there's a rectangular prism, which has a base area, so my base area here, this amount of space, or my bottom layer, if you would, is four and three quarter feet squared. Now this means that two values, my length and my width, were already multiplied together to give me that base. So volume equals length times width times height. These two were already taken care of, okay? So those two combined already gave me my four and three fourths, and now, so that gives me my bottom layer, I just need the height. So how many layers of four and three quarters do I need? Well, I need two and one third of those. So this is what happens. So this guy, those two combined give me this, and the height is this. So now I just need to multiply those. So my four and four thirds gives me 16, 17, 18, 19 quarters, or 19 fourths, times two and one third, six, seven, that gives me seven thirds like that. Okay, again, I'll see if there's anything I can simplify. I don't, I don't see any. I have 12 on the bottom, 4 times 3, and a 19 times 7 over here. Uh, 7 times 9 gives me 63. 7 times 1 gives me 7, plus 6 gives me 13. So I wind up with 113, excuse me, 133 over 12. And from there, Let's see. What From there, I just need to divide. So here's my 12. Here's my 133. I could leave it as such. I could leave it like that, I suppose. But I like to clean up after I'm done here. So let's see. So this goes in 0. This goes in 1. There's a 12. There's a 1. Bring this guy down. He'll go one time again for 12. One left. So, so 11 and 1, 12. Um, and the unit, again, is feet cubed, okay? So that's working out pretty well, all right? 
The only other one I'm going to talk about quickly, they mix things up a little bit. They start having some fun with you as far as the length of a rectangular prism is three and a half times as long as the width. Um, and then the height is one quarter of the width. Now this is kind of fun stuff here, but what I'll do is simply draw this out for you to give you a little idea of what they're looking at here or what they're trying to accomplish for you. So I'm going to label length and my width and my height. Good idea always to draw things out. The width being three centimeters. Now what they're saying is, well, the length is three and a half times as long as the width. So the length is three and a half times as long as the width, the width being three. So you need to work that out. And the height is one quarter of. So it's one quarter of the three. And so that's what that guy looks like. Okay, so and you work those out. So over here on the side, so if I'm working the length and it's three and one half times three, again, I need fraction. So let's see, so three, so that's seven halves times three or three over one. And the length is then 21 over two. And you can leave it like that or you can say, all right, that's going to go 10 times with uh, one left. So that's 10 and one half and that's a centimeter, okay? So I can write that right there. So 10 and one half centimeters. There you have it. And then the other guy is one fourth. So the height is one fourth of three, or three over one. And if you multiply those, you get three quarters. So this becomes three quarters of a centimeter. And from there, if they're asking for you to determine the volume, you, now you have your values you can multiply. So I'll change colors a little bit. So you're going to take this value, this value, and this value, and you're going to multiply those out to get your volume. Okay? All right, folks. Well, you know, sometimes, though, just a little thing here. You might want to just keep those, knowing that you're going to um, multiply, keep those improper, um, these mixed numbers here, these mixed numbers here, because you're going to wind up making them improper anyway when you multiply. So a little forethought there. I guess I didn't have to divide that out first. All right. That's all, folks. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.